Here are three silly mistakes we have to stop making in our calculus exams. I'm gonna show you some example integrals because these mistakes happen a lot when it comes to integration. The first integral is one over x dx. Now you might be looking at this and you're thinking, oh, well, the simple answer is natural log of x, right? Well, wrong. Let's dive into why. Do you remember that when you take the derivative of natural log of x, you get an answer that's one over x, right? So it might be understandable to think, well, in the direction of a derivative, we get one over x. So if we're doing an integral and going backwards, why is it that the integral of one over x isn't just natural log of x? The way I wanna explain this to you is graphically. Do you remember that when you graph the natural log function, it looks like this orange curve? What do you notice about the domain? And by the way, if you forgot what a domain is, be sure to also check out this other video I've put up on my channel as well to get a refresher. And if you haven't already too, it'll help me out if you guys like and subscribe. And leave some comments below. Tell me some other frustrations you've been having on your homework that maybe I'm not covering in this video. Notice how the domain of natural log of x requires that x has a value greater than zero. Because if you remember with exponents, and you want to take e to a power of x, you can't take it to a power of a real number and get a result that's either zero or negative. So the domain here is restricted. What this means is that when you've learned that the derivative of natural log of x gives you a result that's one over x, it already assumes that you have a restricted domain. It's requiring that x is greater than zero from the get-go. So this means that in our original integral, when we're trying to piece back together this original natural log of x function when integrating one over x, we have to be mindful that the domain had to have already been restricted in the original function. So what do you think we need to do to restrict the value of x when taking the integral? Well, I'm showing you the answer right here, which is a very small modification. We have to ensure that when we integrate one over x dx, that we take natural log of the absolute value of x. This allows us then to safely say that if x was a negative number originally, we're going to ensure that with the absolute value in the parent function natural log of x, we'll still get a valid answer that's on this curve and not something that's gonna to be to the left of the x-axis. Not only that, but there's also another issue too. Do you see what I forgot in my answer here with natural log of absolute value of x? Pause the video, drop a comment below, tell me what mistake did I make because this is a common one that we all might make. Okay, so you may have noticed that I forgot to add a constant to the end. This is super important. Whenever you take the integral of a function, remember to always add that plus c constant at the end. And why is that? Well, if you remember, when we integrate, we're getting this parent function, correct? But the thing is that if that parent function happened to have a constant at the end of it, say plus three plus pi, and we took its derivative to get the resulting function we integrated in the first place, a derivative of a constant is zero. So we lost information. What this means is that when you integrate, you have to take into account that integration actually gives you a family of functions as the result. So we can't make an assumption that the original parent function that we have a derivative or differential of didn't have a constant at the end. So make sure to always add that. The very last thing I wanna go over is a huge pitfall. When we think of associative and commutative laws of addition and multiplication, right? You might think that the integral of f of x times g of x dx is always going to be the same as the separate integral of f of x dx times the separate integral of g of x dx. And let me show you why that's not always the case. We're gonna start with this very simple sine of x cosine of x dx function. And you might already know the answer because you may have seen this on your homework. But what if I split it up, like I'm showing you above here, into two different separate integrals, where f of x is sine of x in our case, and g of x is cosine of x. So we would have the integral of sine of x, which we know is negative cosine of x, times the integral of cosine of x, which happens to simply be sine of x, and we get a very simple answer, right? Negative cosine of x times sine of x plus c. Well, that's a huge mistake because I wanna show you what happens when we do it the correct way. 
with the correct way, we're not breaking this up into two parts. We're noticing something that is common between sine and cosine, which is a, di a differential, right? Because when you take the sine of x function and take its derivative, you would get cosine of x dx, which allows us to use the substitution method here, which you may already be familiar with. And what we do is we simply choose a variable, I'll call it u, and we'll say, oh, well, u is going to be sine of x, du, its derivative, will be cosine of x dx. And when we simply substitute everything in, this becomes a simple integration of a polynomial. It's the integral of u du. And that's a simple answer, one half u squared plus c, right? Well, don't forget to also put back in your original variable x. We can't just say the answer is one half u squared plus c because I didn't give you a problem with u as the variable. I gave you a problem with x. So notice how u is equal to sine of x. You have to make sure that in your final answer, you sub back in the value of u as sine of x. So we get an answer that's one half sine squared of x plus c. And it's very clear that that does not equal the first attempt we made, which is negative cosine of x sine of x plus c. So I hope this video was useful. Leave a comment below. Tell me what other videos you like to see. And if you haven't checked out this Calculus 2 playlist yet, be sure to do so and I'll catch you later.